Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to solve a physics olympiad question. Let me draw the question and then go over it. So we have a water tank, a container, and by the way I will attach the original exam paper and the paper is a Turkish olympiad exam, it is the beginning olympiad level, so the question is relatively simple or hard, you decide on that. So we will have two holes. And I will draw them as pipes to better visualize them. We have two holes, as I said. Which one, which one of them is A, other is B. Now, inside this, there is some kind of liquid. You call it water, I call it milk, anything. <laughs> milk, soda, water, whatever you want. It is a liquid. And we are, giving, we are given some height values. The... Distance from A to the top of the container is 4D. The distance between A and B is 8D. And hole B is at a distance of D to the bottom, to the surface. So what will happen? Well, if we have two holes, this means water is going to come out of them. Perhaps from A, it will go to such a distance. And from B, it will go to such a distance. All right. Let me not make this dashed. This is the ground level. We are given that this distance is called X1. Okay. It was called X1 on the question, but I will choose it. I will choose to call it XB because I think it makes more sense. And this one, it was called X2 on the question, which I will call XA. Now, we are asked to find x1 over x2. That is xb over xa. What is this ratio, ratio equal to? I want to give you a couple of seconds to pause the video and think about it. And when you're ready, continue the video, please. All right. I assume that you gave it a go. So let's do it together. What should the best approach be? Well, first of all, I want to consider a much general case and then we will use the values of our question to arrive at the answer. The general case will be considered on the next page. So let's say that we have any container, not the same container, and it can be the same. It doesn't matter. We have this container and it is filled with a fluid. We have a hole at a depth of H. And we are asked to find the velocity that the uh, water will come out of it. Because remember, in this question, we will need the velocity that both of these, uh, that the water has value, it is exiting through both of these holes. This one we call VA and this one we call VB. Right? At the end of the day, we need these two velocities. So let's, let's just examine the general case and let's try to find the value for the velocity. So this is the general case and let's say the density of our fluid is rho. What can we say? Well, we can use Bernoulli's principle, which I have a video about. You can access it from the cards right now and also from the descriptions part. From Bernoulli's principle, if I focus on the top layer, 1, and the exit, 2, then I can say the pressure at point 1 plus rho g h1, the height value at uh, 1, plus, what was it, 1 over 2 rho v1 squared, the velocity at 1, is equal to p2 plus rho g h2 plus 1 over 2 rho v2 squared. As I said, this comes from Bernoulli's principle. And G here is nothing but the gravitational field strength, uh, the acceleration due to gravity. All right, there will be some simplifications, don't worry. For example, P1 and P2, they are both equal to, to the atmospheric pressure because the, uh, because the top is open. Like that is also the case in the question. So the top is open. That's why P1 is equal to P2. They cancel. Now, if I select the level at which our hole is at as H0 level, then I can set H2 
to be zero. So this cancels. Also, also notice that rows cancel. These are gone, which means the type of fluid does not matter. And at the end of at the beginning of this video, I insinuated it, right? I said you might have water, soda, milk, anything. But you probably have water in this kind of a thing. This is like a water tower. Uh, so if we make that cancellations and also H1 becomes H when we choose this level as the height equals zero level. So we have GH plus V1 squared divided by 2 equaling V2 squared divided by 2. V2 will be V. So we are solving for V2. I, I mean for V then. Which means V squared is equal to, I multiply by 2 to get 2GH plus V1 squared. Here we will make an approximation. Notice that since the cross section of the top is much much greater than the cross section of the whole, V1 will be much much smaller than V. Because think of it like this, when a tiny amount of height changes, from the, the top, a drastic amount of water should come out of the pipe. So from the hole, the water ex exits very quickly, but the height doesn't change that much. This is why V1 is much, much smaller than V2, V2. V2. So V1 can be neglected here. We can take it to be zero in comparison to V squared. Which means that V is approximately equal to 2GH under the square root. This is what we need. This is the general case. Using this result, we now return to our question and we keep in mind that H is the distance from the top to the point of interest. It is the depth. It is not the height, right? Because depth is from the top to the bottom and height is from the bottom to the top. There is a huge difference between the two. Now, with that being said, what is VA then? Let me write it here, maybe. VA is equal to the square root of 2G. What is the H? Right here, 2D. I mean 4D. It is the depth, 4D. What about VB? Well, VB will be equal to... We have 2G again. What is the depth in this case? 4D plus 8D, 12D. So we have... Let's see, we have... 2 times 2 GD under the square root. And this one is going to be 24. So is it like 2 times 6 GD? Yes, that is, that is the case. All right, so we got this. But this isn't enough because notice, when the water exits the hole uh, through any hole, it will be in projectile motion. So X, general X, will be V times T. And T is the time of flight. How much time it takes for our water to uh, arrive at the surface. So we need this TF. And how can we find it? We should use kinematics. Let's again consider a general case on the last page. So, well, let me, yeah, let me do it like this. So this is H prime then, okay? It is the height. Notice that. It is the height. And so if I choose it as the height value and let me uh, let me choose it. Well, actually, let me do it on a new diagram. Why not? Because I ch chose that as H0. It might confuse you. Let me do it on a new diagram. This is H0 and this is the pipe. So this is H prime. The velocity is completely in the horizontal. There is no vertical velocity initially. So if we, if we say delta y equals v naught y t plus 1 over 2 a y t squared. This is one of the kinematics equations for uniform circular motion. If we say this and if we choose downwards as the positive direction for y, delta y becomes h prime. This goes to zero because there is no initial velocity. We have 1 over 2. What is a y? That is just g t squared. So t time of flight is... 2h prime over g under the square root. We will now use this result for our case. 
So, what is TA? It is square root 2. What is the height? Not the depth, but the height. That is 8 plus 1, 9D. Divide by G. So, that gives us 3, uh, 3 square root of 2D divided by G. What about TB? That is going to be 2DG divided by G under the square root. Cool. Now we have everything. Let's bring them all together. For XB, I will say it, it is equal to VB times TB because there is no acceleration horizontally. It is uniform motion. This is equal to 2 times 6GD under the square root times this quantity which will give us let's see we see that g is cancelled that is nice we expect to get a distance value also d comes out of the square root and then we have two times root six times root two that is going to give four root three is that it let me check yeah i think so this is quite good and now for XA, it is VA times TA. So we have 2 times the square root of 2GD times TA is 3 times 2DG under the square root. G is simplify again. That's nice. D comes, D comes up front. And then we will have 2 times 2 times 4. Ooh, times 4, Ooh, excuse me, yeah, it is going to be 12, I don't know why it took me that much, it is 12, right, root 2 times root 2, that is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so if we return to our question, xb is here, 4 root 3 d, and xa is here, 12 d, d is simplify, cool, 4 divided by 12 is going to give you 3. So we have root 3 divided by 3. And this is our final answer. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to take away one thing, remember that it is always nice to consider the general case and then adapt, uh, adapt it. So then adapt, adapt your problem to the general case. I believe getting general results in physics is very powerful and I believe this question demonstrates how useful that approach can be. Anyways, if you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.